I wasn't going to allow anybody to limit my life except for me. And what I realized was the one thing I always did well in the past was know what I wanted. I wanted to buy my mom a house and a car. I wanted to be rich. And not only did I know what I wanted, I know why I wanted it. I wanted to be happy. I wanted my mom to be happy. That was the why. That was the thing that drove me every day, regardless of what everyone else thought I could or couldn't do. And then it was my job to understand how am I going to do it. The interesting thing I saw mathematically about my life is the minute you know what you want, and most people don't know what they want. They haven't sat down and thought about it. But the minute you know what you want, you have a mathematical advantage over everyone else. You now have a possibility. And then if you know the why, if you know the why in your life, you now have a statistical success greater than possibility, you have a probability. When you know your why, you become inspired. You have passion and purpose when you know your why. And there's only one thing in your way between you and what you want, and that's you. Now, I used to tell people, you're the only thing in your way, right? Once, once you know the what and why, let's figure out the how together. Let's raise your awareness. Let's get a strategy together. Let's look at the effective habits that you need. Who should I ask for help? How should I attract it? All these different things. When I say you're in your own way, what I mean is there's two things in your way. The first is really easy to understand. It's time. If I'm going to teach you a lesson today that's the hardest to understand, it's this. Time is a man-made construct. Why is that so difficult to understand, especially at your age? Because you only think you have so much time. Time is not linear. Time is one. The past, present, and future are all the same, which means you should be able to access what you want, that everything that you want already exists. You're the only thing that's not allowing it to happen. The faster you vibrate, the more you can understand or be aware of that which exists. There's enough of everything, including sports jobs. There's enough of everything for everyone. In fact, there's more than enough of everything for everyone. Time does not uh, align with that thought, right? Time is a scarcity. Right? If we think in terms of time, a man-made construct, by the way, we only have so much time. Ah, oh, I'll be happy, happy when I graduate. I'll be happy when I get my first job. I'll be happy when I make $100,000. I'll be happy when I make a million dollars. I'll be happy when I make $100 million. I'll be happy when I get married. I'll be happy when I get divorced. I'll be happy, right? It goes on and on. And guess what? When you attach your happiness to an outcome based on time, that time will never come. You need to... In order to be happy, enjoy the consistent every day, persistent without quit, pursuit of your potential. That's happiness. Enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential. And you've got to know what your potential is. What do you want? Right? What is it? You want to be a sports journalist? You want to be a sports doctor? You want to be a sports lawyer? You want to be a, what is it you want to be? Administrator? You want to be an athlete? Whatever it is you want... You need to consistently, every day, persistently, without quit, enjoy that pursuit. Why consistency? I think consistency is the most important thing because consistency elevates your awareness. What's the lesson? Don't limit your point of entry. Consistently, persistently pursue your potential and enjoy it. That's all I did. I didn't let anything limit me. All I kept doing was thinking about what I wanted, why I wanted it, and how I was going to get it, and trusted the universe. This is what most people do. They're afraid of heights. So what do they do? They, they go, I'm afraid of heights, and they focus in on being afraid, and they focus in on being afraid, and they keep focusing on being afraid. And then what happens? They, they get real close to what they're afraid of, and of course, what happens? They fall off. Why? Because they're afraid of heights. And then, of course, they catch and they save themselves on some branch. And they're hanging there. They're hanging there. And they're thinking, oh my God, is anybody up there that can help me? Now they're asking for inspiration. Now they're asking for help. When they put all their faith in what they didn't want, and they were surprised to get what they didn't want, because they put faith in what they didn't want, and they're hanging there, and they're looking up, going in there, and they're helping. And then 
the universe or God comes down and says, yes, I am here to help you. Just let go. I'll catch you. I'll catch you. But you know what? We're all too afraid. We're all too afraid to let go. So what do we do? We look back up and say, anyone else up there that can help me? Come on. I let go. I let go. I didn't trust. I wasn't afraid to say, oh, if I don't, if I don't become a real lawyer, I'll never be a sports agent. Oh, if I, right, if I, I don't take that normal job. Oh, if I didn't do this. Oh, I, I can't help out my friend. Oh, if I don't start meditating. Oh, there is no limit in the point of entry, even today, from what I did. Now, if somebody asks me, David, how do you become a sports agent? How do you become the CEO of the most notable sports agency in the world? And I told you, oh, it's really simple. Try to become a football player, then study in medicine, then go to law school to be an oil and gas litigator, but instead take a job in the internet, sell legal research online, then go to the Silicon Valley, raise a ton of money, then become CEO of the biggest first smartphone, biggest manufacturer of phones in the world, then retire, become an angel investor and a real estate developer, <clears throat> then help out a friend, shift the paradigm of your own life into one of service, and you'll meet somebody that'll give you the best job. Most of you would say, why did I come tonight? I'm 50 years old, I have three mentors at all time minimum in my life. People that sit in the situation that I want to be in. If you wanna be a sports journalist, call Sam Farmer and ask him for help. You can try to do what you want to become Sam Farmer, or you can ask Sam Farmer how to be Sam Farmer. If you want to be a sports doctor, go call Dr. Chow. Ask him how he was the youngest doctor in the NFL. He'll be happy to help you. You want to be a sports agent? Come down the street, in, intern for me, or Lee, or Rep One, or Athletes First, or CAA, or IMG, or all the other lawyers and sports agents that came from our firm right here over the last 30 years. Ask. And if they say no the first time, realize you're that much closer to getting what you want. I have an intern right now from Brooklyn. Came out here. He, he wants to work in the NBA. He told me a story the other day that he waited outside nine hours for Phil Jackson. Nine hours he waited. And when Phil Jackson came out to talk to Phil Jackson, he said, oh, uh, he goes, sir, I waited nine hours. He said, oh, you know, I don't have time right now to talk to you. And he said, okay, fine. Where can I wait next then when you do have time? This kid ended up literally getting into the NBA and interning for the NBA just by pure perseverance, consistently, persistently. How bad, if you don't want it bad enough, somebody else does. Somebody else does. When I lost everything, the hardest thing that I had to do was I was already on my journey. I was already of service, but I'd created bad causes in my life. I'd made dumb decisions. I'd surrounded with the wrong people and the wrong ideas. I wasn't asking for help. I was living in arrogance, egotistical living with time, ego attached to outcomes. Two years after I was in my transformation, I went bankrupt. Now the two hardest things I had to do was I realized when I woke up that morning bankrupt that I had to go up to Lee Steinberg's office where I, my office was the ones from the movie Jerry Maguire up here in Fashion Island. Lee Steinberg on one side, Warren Moon, my now partner on the other, and tell those guys, by the way, your Midas CEO, the guy that you've entrusted to take this firm to the next level, the number one sports agency in the world, is bankrupt. I had a pit in my stomach. But before I could leave to work, I had one more thing I had to do. Do you remember why I wanted to be rich? Anyone? How my mom? What I want to buy her? A house and a car. Right. So I had to go walk over to my mom's house before I left for work, knock on the door, wake her up, tell my mom, "Mom, I've lost everything. I'm bankrupt. And by the way, you have to move because I lost your house as well. Hardest thing I've ever had to do." My mom looked me in the eyes and she said really simply, are you okay? Can I let you have some money? Do you wanna borrow some money? That's when I realized what my life was about, right? The purpose of my life was just to unconditionally give to others. The way that my mom, her whole life, 
the reason I wanted to give to her, the reason I wanted to be rich, had given to everybody. It was never about her. She was in receivership. She simply was in receivership, which is why every one of my siblings are successful. They went to Harvard, Penn, Columbia, summa cum laude. They're extraordinary human beings because they all live their lives of service and in receivership. They're of value. They don't limit their points of entry. My younger brother, summa cum laude from Harvard, Balchem, graduated in three years, decided to get a religious studies uh, master's for his fourth year since he was under scholarship, knows six languages, decides as he gets into Harvard Med School that he's not going to be a doctor because he's not going to limit his point of entry in life, and he became a rabbi. But rabbinical to school was too easy for him, so he got a PhD in social ethics and ended up working for President Clinton as an advisor on social ethics and cloning. Now, if you would ask my brother when he was five years old what he wanted to become, he would have told you a doctor, the same way I would have told you a football player. Don't limit your point of entry. You can do whatever you want. The biggest mistake people make in trying to get a job in sports is number one, they think sports is a job. It's not a job. It's an industry. Jobs are journalist, doctor, lawyer, Social media, marketing, PR, those are jobs. Those are skills, knowledge. Sports is an industry. If you keep your point of entry wide, you'll have multiple options of what you can do within sports. Right? It, it's, it's amazing to me. 90% of the people limit their point of entry. And they've already limited their point of exit as well. I'm here to tell you, don't do it. All I want you to do is to enjoy the consistent, everyday, persistent, without quit, pursuit of your potential. I want you to think about what you love to do and then figure out how to monetize it. If you're gonna call it a job, know that you wanna make money. And it's okay to sacrifice. It's okay to sacrifice. It will come faster if you trust the universe and let go. It will come. Right, I have friends, my friend Mike Tannenbaum went to law school with me. He's the GM of the Jets. He's now executive vice president of the Dolphins. And he always says, oh, I was lucky. You know, I went to go work for the Saints and the collective bargaining agreement, and I, I was in the right place. No, 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 that's not true. The truth is you had $100,000 worth of law loans like me, and you had Jewish parents like me, but yet you said and stood up to everyone that I'll make $600 a month working for the Saints starting at the bottom, not limiting my point of entry, you weren't afraid. Brian Cashman, good friend of mine, interned for free for the New York Yankees. While everybody else was laughing, going, oh my God, he's working for free. Ended up assistant general manager and then general manager, one of the most sought after point of entry jobs in the world. If you truly want to work in sports, then figure out what you love to do and ask for help and attain the skills, the knowledge to go along with your desire. Live your life in passion with purpose and profitability. It's okay to make money, right? There's two sides of money that you wanna worry about. One, what am I gonna do with my money? But also, how do I get my money? And if you get your money manipulating people, it's not gonna work out for you. But if you get your money by motivating, by providing value, by consistently, I wake up every morning and think to myself after I think of 10 people I can help, my room's full of $100 bills and I actually feel what it feels like to give $100 bills to people all day long and take 20 back. I wanna know what it feels like. I'll tell you why people don't close is because they don't believe and they don't carry the energy. There's an unconscious competency that people have, genetic and energetic. They don't feel it. That's the only difference between a closer and someone that doesn't close is they can't articulate the, the emotional feel, right? You buy on emotion for logical reasons. So everyone in here, I don't want you to ever limit the point of entry for yourself. I don't want you to get in your own way. I don't want you to let the time or your ego, the need to be right, the need to be offended, the need to be guilty, the need to be fearful, the need to be separate, the need to be superior, the need to be inferior, any of the needs of the ego to get into your way. I need you to know what it is what you want, the possibility, why you want it, the probability, and then how you're gonna get it is really easy. You're gonna elevate your awareness, you are increase your vibration by being of service. Your strategy is gonna to be to ask for help as well as give help. 
okay? And then you're gonna provide the value. And if you do that, the what, the why, and the how, you will make your possibilities probabilities, and that sports job that you want, your perspective and your reality. Thank you very much.